Good morning, church. Take your Bibles. Let's go back to chapter number 16 as we finish up the story of Philippi. Now, we're not going to take as much time on other churches, but we're taking time on this one because it kind of sets the pattern of this second missionary journey. These are things that happen in every city where Paul went. Number one, he went to the Jews first. He preached the gospel. Number two, he then turned to the Gentiles. Almost every city we believe, because it talks about that, that he did signs, miracles, and wonders. He did that in this city. Persecution. Every city he went into, he was persecuted. This one had a, a special uh, effect upon what was going to happen in the church. And so uh, the Holy Spirit let us see into the glimpse and how God was working in the midst of persecution. And so we see that God miraculously delivers Paul and Silas uh, from the jail after they had been beaten and how the Philippian jailer comes and says, Sir, what must I do to be saved? Now let's pick up the story there. Ask in verse 30, Sir, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and he washed their stripes, and immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all of his household. Now this is again the result of, of God moving in a very strange way, uh, unforeseen why God would allow his faithful, faithful prophets and apostles and preachers, these guys missionaries, and they're serving God faithfully. And yet God allowed persecution, beating, imprisonment. He, he, he allowed things to happen that we'd shake our head and say, why, Lord, why would you let things happen? Well, that's what the Holy Spirit reveals in this lesson today, the Why? Because God was about bringing people to salvation. And if that meant the suffering of his son, Jesus, and his crucifixion, if that's what's necessary to bring people to salvation, then God was willing to allow that to happen and cause it to happen, to bring it to pass so that many might be saved through Jesus' suffering. And if through our suffering, Paul and, and Silas' suffering, if through our faithfulness and willingness to accept that suffering and just sing praises to God and glorify God, if he uses that to bring people to salvation as he did in this story, the Philippian jailer, many others in the jail perhaps, the Philippian jailer's family, if that's what it takes for people to see that God is a God who loves them and willing to allow them to be a part of his kingdom. And that's what happens. This man who was about to commit suicide and spend eternity in hell is drawn back from the brink of destruction and he's saved. We see the woman who was filled with demons and prophesying in the name of Satan and, and doing divination, drawn back from the dark side to embrace the light. Uh, we just see God working in these circumstances. And, and Paul <clears throat> kind of had an insight into that, that, that knowing that God is going to use these things, his purpose was simply to glorify God in the midst of his problems. And that's what he did. Silas joined him in singing. People were saved, gloriously saved. Their, their lives turned upside down or upside right, if you will, Men who are hardened by battle like this Philippian jailer undoubtedly was. Usually you were a jailer at the end of your, your ministry. Usually you went out to fight when you could travel and you could march and you could, you could fight in battle when, when you were too old for that. And you were given positions like this. And uh, it's just amazing how God works out all the things together for good. But we're also going to see that there's another purpose in that. And I don't have time to read it for you, but in verse 35 down through verse 40, the next day the city councilors, the magistrates, 
the city council, the magistrates, they come and they find out that Paul and Bar and Silas had been freed and what had happened. And so they're going to try to send them away. And Paul says, no, listen, hey, listen to me. We are Roman citizens. And you want to run us out of here secretly as if you didn't do anything wrong? Now they're scared to death because they recognized that they had broken Roman law. They had not properly given a trial. They had not sought the circumstances, nor had they properly given sentence. And now they have beaten a Roman citizen without any reason. And they're scared. And they try to... to Paul said, no, 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 uh -uh, listen. You guys have done this. And so Paul said, we're not, we're not going to, to let you gloss over this. And so they pleaded with them not to seek restitution, not to bring about charges. That's basically what they, they pleaded with them in verse number 39 means, is, is not to cause any conflict, but please just move on down the line. So Paul and the church had this to hold over the magistrates. This church, though it did suffer some persecution in that community, they knew the power of God, that is, the leadership of that community, knew the power of God, knew the miracles that had been done, the healing of the woman, the, the earthquake that opened the jail, the transformation of lives of men like the, the Philippian jailer. And this gave the church a little bit of leverage, if you would, in this community, and also uh, some recognition that this was a special movement of God. Now that church would grow to be a solid, good church, a church that supported Paul and his missionary journeys, and one who was solid doctrinally for the most part. And so God uses all these circumstances of life. And if we properly react to persecution and false uh, accusations, and if we accept the difficulties of life, singing praises to God and giving glory to Jesus, then God is able to take those circumstances and work everything together for good. It was not good that Paul had to be beaten or Silas, and they had to spend a night in jail and under this pain. And I mean, their bodies were whelped up and striped and beaten and bruised and bloodied and and they're going to have to deal with that for weeks to come. They're going to have to deal with what they had to deal with there. But through all the suffering and pain, God brought forth a church. A church was birthed out of, out of the bloody birth, if you will, as a woman gives birth. Out of the pain and the sorrow and the suffering of, of what's going on in, in childbirth, this church was birthed and had a great start because these men were willing to suffer persecution joyfully. Now let's make sure that we follow that kind of example. It's certainly the example of our Lord and it's the example of his apostles. Let's be willing to suffer the persecution, if not gladly, at least joyfully. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you again that we have lived in a time when there has been very little persecution of believers. Now, Father, as we face the time of our own making, a time when we've allowed darkness to enter once again into this culture, that, Father, you'll help us to joyfully accept whatever the consequences are and that we might be able to suffer joyfully for Jesus' sake. For it's in his name we pray. Amen.